DIYs are a cool new feature added to the world of Animal Crossing, allowing us to create and customize our own furniture rather than rely on the Nook's cranny for our decorating needs. But did you know that it's also a new method to make more bells fast? Not so fast, Vasco Games. Oh hey there, Cora. What are you doing here? Remember how you wanted to renovate your island but didn't have enough bells to upgrade your house? Or buy all the cool things you wanted at the store? Well, I'm here to tell you about all the different ways you could use to make a lot of bells. Oh, uh, were we supposed to do that in May? Uh, uh, uh maybe? <laughs> most of the methods I knew about back then required a lot of bells to begin with, so I ended up crafting my own way of earning bells, by making DIYs. DIYs? DIY though. You might want to take a seat for this one. DIYs work in a simple way. As long as you have the required ingredients and a crafting table nearby, you can build any piece of furniture, tool, or decoration item whose recipe you already know. So how is this useful for making bells? Well, when crafting an item, the sale value of that item is equal to double the sum of the sale price of its raw materials. Let me say that in a way that might make more sense. DIYs double the value of the raw materials used. So for example, the bamboo wall decor requires one piece of bamboo to craft. If I were to sell that one piece of bamboo, I would get 80 bells. But if I were to use it to craft a bamboo wall decor and then sell the crafted item, it would sell for 160 bells. Crafting doubles the value of the raw materials used. However, this does not work for all raw materials. Any recipe that uses gold will not double in value. Recipes using non-native fruit are also a big no-no. For some reason, the game converts all the fruit-based recipes to use the native fruit values. So for example, I have cherries as my native fruit that I could sell for 100 bells each. And my friend Cora just brought me 6 pears. I could sell those 6 pears at 500 bells apiece and earn myself a nice 3000 bells. But if I were to use those 6 pears to craft myself a nice little pear rug, it would only sell for 1200. Ah, uh, that's the sale price of a cherry rug you scam a little- I know better. Let's go in my kitchen. So, uh, don't craft a sale with your non-native fruit. Ever. Uh, pumpkins are just as bad. These colorful vegetables don't- They aren't vegetables! Pumpkins are fruit. Fruit? Fruit! Okay, these colorful fruit don't double the value when crafting at all. Just like with gold. The last set of items to never use for crafting are unassessed fossils. Uh, you may have a bunch of them lying around, especially once you've finished your museum donations, but, but hear me out. An unassessed fossil is worth 800 bells. Crafting will still double its value. However, if you have bladders assess the fossils instead, the lowest possible sale price for your fossil will be 8,000 bells. Guess that blabbering out is good for something after all, huh? You might also be wondering if customizing your items increases their sale value. Sadly, customization does nothing for the sale price. If anything, you're losing money by having to buy those customization kits. And unlike in real life, slapping supreme onto any object doesn't instantly add a zero to its selling price. Apart from the items that don't work with the DIY double value trick, uh, some just have such a low value to begin with that going through the trouble of crafting them might just not be worth your time. Um, here are some of the most common crafting items and their base values, just so you can see for reference. Recipes that mainly use sticks, weeds, or picked flowers usually aren't worth the crafting time since those materials are only valued at 5, 10, and 40 bells respectively. Hybrid flowers are a bit better since they sell for 80 bells each. Except for golden or blue roses, which sell for a thousand bells each. Aren't those hard to get though? Don't get me started. Well, the nice thing is that their values do double when crafting. So if you really are short on money, you could pick some flowers. But if you aren't super pressed for bells, just, just do your dailies and save your resources for when you need to make bells fast. Patience is virtue, and in our case, patience pays off. Patience is not on my list of ways to make bells in this game, Vasco. Well you see, every day Nook's Cranny will have a hot item posted on the little board outside. Two if you have the upgraded store. And uh, that hot item will be a craftable item that you already know how to make. The thing about hot items is that the Nooklings will buy it from you for double the price. Which for us means that the value of the raw materials get quadrupled, but still not worth it for unassessed fossils and non-native fruit. Ideally, you want to save up as many raw materials as possible and then go ham on crafting the daily hot item to make a lot of bells fast. So remember, do your dailies and toss those raw materials in storage for when you need the bells. 
Worst case scenario, you've got a large stockpile of items to craft and sell on hand when you need them. That's what the business folk like to call liquid assets. Uh, I also did a bit of a time traveling experiment to get a better idea of what the hot items could be and I kept getting items that mainly required regularly spawning daily items. While I couldn't fully rule out certain categories of DIY, I can say with pretty good confidence that you're most likely to get the hot items that use those regularly spawning daily items. Things like wood, stone, iron, seashells, coconuts, and bamboo. You, you know, the items that you get for doing your dailies regardless of the season. As in, don't worry about saving up your cherry blossom petals for winter just in case they are randomly needed for a hot item. Whoops. As a final aside, the hot items of the day are selected at random at the beginning of a day from some of the DIYs you already know. Uh, this means you can't just write down what each day's hot items are and then travel back to that day to craft and sell. The game will just randomly generate a new set of hot items when you start the game back at a new day. Although, let's be honest, if you look at the make bells with DIYs and hot items, you probably aren't too keen on time travel. Most other methods of making bells take a much longer time, and the point of this one is to make bells fast, right now. Liquid assets. And that brings me to the last point about crafting to sell. Efficiency. Since we don't have the option of bulk crafting, we have to sit through that 7 second crafting sequence, so which I've timed from the selection of the craft item to the finishing of the craft text box thing. <laughs> this can be sped up so that it only takes 4.5 seconds by tapping the A button once after the crafting animation begins. Not only does crafting take time, but we also have limited pocket space, and uh, that has to fit both raw materials and the crafted items. Uh, the best way to deal with these limitations is to craft high resource items or fences. You can get the fence DIYs from the Nook Miles terminal. Fences are particularly good if you're trying to clear out a bunch of raw materials from your storage, although I don't think they can be a hot item. The nice thing about fences is that they stack in 50, so when I use a stack of 30 wood to make corral fences, I end up having one nice stack of 50 fences in my pocket instead of 5 separate items, which would have been the case with non-fence crafting. With high resource items, you save more time. Instead of spending 22 seconds to craft those fences, I could have just built one double wooden bed in five and called it a day. Of course, that also means I'll burn through my resources a lot faster, which isn't ideal unless the high resource item also happens to be a hot item. Uh, do your dailies, save your resources for hot items, and liquidate them assets when you need bells fast. What you do with those bells is up to you, but if you want to make even more bells with them, why not check out Koromora's guide on the many other ways to make bells. She does a ton of amazing Animal Crossing content, so you can learn a lot more about the game from her. And if you are coming from Cora's channel, I sure hope you'll check out some of my other analytical videos, like the value of golden eggs in Splatoon 2 Salmon Run, or the more character-focused can X become champion of Pokemon Sword and Shield. Happy holidays, happy crafting, and happy questing. Now go watch Cora's video.